friends, and welcome back to the Rewind podcast of Forward Church. Join us each week as we take a look back on Sunday's message and dig a little deeper into the conversations with those who are teaching across our sites at Forward. We want to invite you to be part of the conversation too. So if something we're talking about on Sunday morning sparks a question in you, head to our website forwardchurch.ca slash ask us and submit your questions there. And we're going to do our best to engage with those questions in this space. With that said, let's jump in and get started. Hey, everybody. We are back. Blair hanging out with you today. I am here one-on-one with Daryl. We've not had the pleasure of doing a one-on-one podcast together yet, so I hope you're nervous. Extremely Um, nervous. Okay. Or are you talking to the listeners? Both. (laughs) (laughs) I, however, am not nervous at all. (laughs) However, uh, I, I don't know. Have you, did you, I had the pleasure already of doing one-on-one podcast with Derek and Kirk. Have, Mm -hmm. did you listen to those ones at all? I didn't. No. Okay. I'm coming into this fresh. Oh, this is perfect. (laughs) Do you know why? Because I, I I have a little something called fun facts about have you heard about this fun facts about? Uh, no, I okay. haven't. So when I'm one-on-one, I like to do a little session called fun facts about, because it means you're sitting on the hot seat and right. I can share information. And, uh, as many have probably heard, and I know Kirk knows well, I have people <laughs> that know things and That's I, terrifying. I, it is, should be terrifying. You have people or you have Facebook. I have all of the above. Okay. Good. So I, <laughs> did my research. I actually, maybe many people might not know this. I've actually known you. I think I knew you back like, I want to say like 13 years ago, probably something like that. Around the time of three, uh, 316, when we did 316 at forward, that was when I met you. Yeah. And, and, uh, so, but I didn't necessarily get to know you until like much later. There you go. Um, so I don't, there was a huge gap there. So I don't have a lot of dirt on you. So I did have to call my people. (laughs) And they will remain nameless, so don't even ask me who okay. my people are. All right. Because um, I have to protect their identities. That's fair. So I have some dirt on you, Daryl, and I'm now about to put you on the hot spot and give because because it's time, anyways. You've ha- you've not even been here a year yet. You've not been not quite. No, nope. so, May thirty first. Okay, so year. forward congregation needs to get to know Daryl a little bit better anyways. So it's welcome to another episode of fun facts about before we dive into our Exodus podcast. Um, so you can confirm if these are true or you can correct them or you can unpack them a little bit, but we're going to start, we're going to start, start gently. Okay. Okay. I, I heard that you do not like any kinds of fruit. Uh, that is, that is true. What on earth is it about fruit? Like, you know, is it the texture? Like, there's sugar in fruit. It's delicious. Uh, Did yeah, you get scarred as a child? Maybe. No, oh. I. Um, yeah, nothing. You just put don't it this like way. It. Fruit doesn't bring me joy. Really, it just doesn't. Not I even like watermelon. It tastes like summer. Well, okay, so watermelons. Watermelon's fine. Okay, but that's not. It's not really a fruit though. But like, you wouldn't like go grab an apple in an apple bowl and just munch on an apple. N- no. That, that has to be like a conscious choice of me of like, I really? should do something healthy today. There's an apple, I guess I will. But it's not like, oh, that looks good. Strawberries, no. raspberries, no. Oh, blueberries. No. Really? No. Wow. <laughs> uh, it's um, just, I want to do more research so on, I, on your brain. <laughs> I, I like vegetables. Vegetables are great. Interesting. Uh, fruit, not so much. Huh. Uh, it, I'll put it this way. Okay. Here's my hot take on it. I, I, it is a little... Di- little disappointing if I don't step on any toes here, but like if I'm at someone's house and they're like, you just had like a great dinner and they're okay. like, we got dessert for you. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Here's and then they bring out cantaloupe. D- um, no, <laughs> no dessert. Dessert is like, it's chocolate. Oh, like dear. it is, it is processed. It is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we could like take this uh, down a rabbit trail and talk about the phytonutrients and fruit, but okay. But I'm just I saying, won't, I won't, I won't. For sake of clarity and honesty, when someone says, "That's wild," don't say I, we have dessert afterwards. Say we have right. a, a bowl of fruit afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to make a mental note if we ever have you over. I'm going to get the biggest fruit bowl I, just, I can find. I just got uninvited from a lot of people. I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's too bad. Sorry. I mean, having a child, like having Parker and trying to feed him, you, you'd you know that like between fruits and vegetables, it's so easy to feed a kid fruit because there's it's so sweet versus vegetables. They're like, I don't want that. Uh, but you I have a three-year-old. He doesn't like anything. Oh, so. <laughs> I relate to that. I totally get that. Okay, moving on here. Uh, <clears throat> you, we talked about, okay, before the podcast, you said something about being on the travel team. And I was like, oh, did you play hockey? And you were like, bah, no, no, I meant the worship travel team. That's right. And you said that you weren't necessarily sporty. However, you were a bit of a track star in junior high, weren't you? I was. Wow, you did. Yeah, a, you I did. did oh, some, Daryl, some digging. People that's underestimate fun. me all the time, and I love it when they uh, do it. That's great. Then I uh, <laughs> yeah, back in the day, like grades like six, seven, and eight, I was uh, on the track team. I I thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, so what? What specifically? What did you do? Like running, long jump, high jump? Oh man, I did like everything. Hundred meter. So it was like the hundred meter dash. Yeah. Uh, was it like like the four hundred meter dash? Okay, that's a big one. Uh, the long distance. Oof. And then, uh, was it long jump? Uh, oh, no, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the triple jump, triple long, jump. long jump. Those are hard ones. Uh, I was not very good at the high jump. Uh, I, I did terrible at that one. Were you um, short? Is that why maybe you were short? Uh, I've been this height since like grade six. Seriously? I've been five, nine forever. <laughs> so right on. I, I was high jump. I, I thrived at high jump, but I was actually so, kind of short. So in grade six, yeah. I was kind of tall. Yeah. But so you very think quickly you... I became not tall. Okay. Yeah. So Caught up. There you go. <laughs> uh, tell us, I, I, was introduced to, um, now let me get my, let me get, okay. I was introduced to a band called, um, Servant's Heart and I'd never heard them before. Okay. And apparently this is your band. <laughs> yep. Tell us about your band of Servant's Heart that you made with your family members. Oh man, this is like super embarrassing. I oh, love oh, that. Oh man. <laughs> now I know who you talk to. All right, so let me clarify. Uh, so no, Servant's Heart was um, a band. That was my very first band. Ooh. I started it up with um, my buddy Jerry. Okay. Uh, and what was the other guy's name? Oh. He's not my buddy anymore. Oh. Oh, what's his name? His last name was Clausen. Or not. No, oh, is it Clausen? Oh, that's awkward. Mm. I hope he's not listening. <laughs> no, he's definitely not. <laughs> uh, oh, man. So anyways, those three of okay. us, we uh, we recorded a, uh, three songs. Where did you yep. record the songs, Daryl? We recorded them in our old Baptist church in the kitchen. So huh. we, brought, we brought the old mixing board uh from from the like the auditorium brought into the kitchen hooked that somehow into a laptop got some free software to do the recording yeah. and uh recorded three tracks and wow. that was way back in the day when recording music was much harder than it was today well you yeah. persevered and uh did it go anywhere after that did you have <laughs> any gigs or uh, that group, we, we performed valiantly for our youth group, right maybe on. once or twice. And then, uh, and then it didn't go anywhere. Right so on. Uh, the one guy, I can't remember his name. I kicked him out of the band cause he was, he was always showing up late. I'm like, you gotta take the serious man. How is servant's heart going to make it big? If you're not, <laughs> if you're not showing up on time. Is that why he's not your buddy anymore? Uh, cause you kicked him no, out. I still hang out with Jerry though. Like, you're we're, hardcore. We're probably going to play some tennis this weekend. Maybe so. we'll book servant's heart sometime <laughs> for the youth, youth events. Oh, uh, there you go. I feel like everyone though, at least in our generation, Daryl, I don't know about, about Kirk and Derek, they're older, but um, <laughs> they always, everybody had a band. Everyone. Maybe if you played an instrument, you were in a band. Like uh, that was. But then a few years later, I formed a band and I had my, my <laughs> two brothers in it and some yeah. other guys in the church. We we're actually pretty good, actually. Okay. Uh, and, and you were one, called, although you said you were pretty good, but weren't you called Nothing Special? No, that was, oh. that was, that was my brother's band. Oh, now my brother, my brother, <laughs> my brother, Eric was in a band uh, called nothing special. And, okay. uh, yeah, they're a punk rock band. Nice. And the whole joke was the announcer would be able to say, okay, well, who we have up next is nothing, nothing special. special. I Hilarious. I wasn't in that group. Uh, I wasn't cool enough. Mm. So surprisingly, enough. I mean, I feel like the names are, <laughs> if we look back, I, I was in a band too, and we were called Hope on Display. And then nice. my brother wanted to change it to Flesh Tones. <laughs> 
the, the and we names. Were like, yeah, that just doesn't sound right. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, I mean, like the names for these bands, early 2000s. Yeah. It was hard to Google things back then. So it was hard mm. to figure out what was a terrible name. We've aged ourselves. Uh. <laughs> Quick, go to the next one. All right, this is my this is my last one. Only right. because we're we're uh we've hit the 10 minute mark here and I don't want to I want to dive into the meat and potatoes still. Uh will will you tell us you had a, a, a two your first car was a 2000 Pontiac Sunfire. You named it what, That's right. What did you name it and why did you name it? Is that a guy thing? I don't know. I'm going to let you answer. Maybe it is. Uh, so it was, <laughs> it was an 01 Pontiac Sunfire. Oh, 01. Uh, yeah, okay. it was an 01 okay. and uh, it was uh, an old man gray. That that's the proper name for it. Mm. Like it's not gray and it's not beige. It's somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I can picture it. I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, yeah, I named my car Walter. Is there, yeah. is there like some special tie to that name or did you just, usually men um, name their cars like a girl's name, like Roxy or like. Do they? Is that, is that typical? I, I have know. no idea. I feel like I'm pretty normal in the fact that right. I didn't name my car. <laughs> no, you got to name your car an old man name. Okay? okay. So you're driving. All right. And it's like rattling and you're not quite sure if you're going to make it there. Yeah. And you have to be like, all right, Walter, you can't on, give up Walter. on me now. Yeah. Come on, man. Patty. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you can you name your car like a girl name or something. If it's a nice car, yeah. but if it's an old junker, no, I get it. it's gotta be a, an old man's it's name. It's gotta be an old man's you name. You mean kind of like, um, Kirk or Derek old names. <laughs> 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 I love that. Cause they're not here to, to defend oh, themselves. Oh man. Oh, they're going to listen to this they later. Won't. They yeah. won't. <laughs> <laughs> but that was sad. I had that car, um, when I was interning here at yeah. forward. Oh, and, okay. Okay. Um, I had the car up until um, when I moved back here to Ontario to come back to, to forward. Oh, ah, okay. I was very tempted to hold on to the car yeah. well, and bring it Walter. here just mm -hmm. so that I could Reminisce. say I, I still have the same car, mm -hmm. still the same person, even though it's been 12 years. Mm. Um, Do you think but, it would have lasted 12 years? Like, Oh, it, it had a lot of heart left in it. Yeah. It could have kept on going because, uh, you know, Walter, it's, you know, steady steady vehicle steady, steady name Walter. i appreciate that name now that i hear the story there behind it mm -hmm. but i i sold it i May sold it to a peace. to a young guy who needed a car to go off to work did and, it say uh, like just so you know like did you put it in writing like its name is walter i i did yeah. not that who knows been, what its name is now that would have been creepy mm. uh, uh, yeah no, that's name, what would have been creepy you gotta <laughs> name your own car you can't just take someone else's name uh, well <laughs> you more of the story go home today everyone mm -hmm. name your car and because of this episode of Fun Facts About, you are now a little bit wiser in regards to who Daryl is. There you go. And maybe we'll have another episode. I've got to get a little bit, I mean, you said you were a little embarrassed, but I really got to make you blush. So I'm going to do a little bit more research with my people. <laughs> we'll have another episode and then I'll really make you blush. Oh man. Good questions. You did your research. I did my research. Yep. You I always deep. do. Let mm. it be known, everybody. Blair is good at research. dangerous. I'm dangerous. <laughs> Don't mess with me. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's, uh, okay. So we, we are in, I think we're in like week 12 of our Exodus series, mm -hmm. right? I, I believe we're, we're kind of counting Easter, right? Um, as, as like week 11. Um, so this, we're in part two and I talked about it on Sunday. We, I talked about how there was kind of like, like Easter was sort of that line that mm -hmm. broke it up into part one and part two. So we're in part two following God day and night, and we're hanging out in Exodus 13, 17 to 22. Uh, Steve Adams spoke at, uh, Cambridge, um, this week. So, uh, and you spoke at Kitchener. So, um, we are going to dive in with some questions for you, Daryl. Um, <clears throat> Of course, I love starting with a brief synops giving you giving us a brief brief synopsis of your message, mostly just in case you know Cambridge people are listening in and sure. and uh, they didn't catch it. So, will you give us a synopsis of your message? Yeah. So, in Exodus chapter thirteen, the very end of the passage, uh, this is where we finally have the Israelites leaving Egypt and they're heading off to the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. uh, so. All of this, everything leading up to it, uh, finally they're beginning to move. And I talked a little bit at the very beginning about taking detours mm -hmm. and shared about a terrible detour <laughs> I had to take once driving from South Carolina to, to Tennessee when I was really young. 
that was brutal. I was terrible. And uh, I thought that resonated well with the fact that the Israelites, they're about to leave and now they're going to experience a detour. And it ends up being like a 40 year detour, them spending time in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Um, but particularly in this passage, we see uh, God saying that uh, he wasn't going to send them by the quicker way, uh, which would have led them directly into battle. He was going to take them uh, on the longer route to the promised land. And the main thing I want us to really understand and, and see what's really happening in this story uh, is the fact that God doesn't always give us what we want, mm-hmm. but instead he gives us what we need. Mm-hmm. And you see this really clearly in the passage and you see it all throughout scripture that often our, our heart's desire isn't necessarily the thing that is going to be the best for us, mm-hmm. um, that God is going to give us what we truly need. And that doesn't mean necessarily that he's going to send us down a, a quick and easy path moving mm-hmm. forward. And I really want to explain how in this passage, we see that God is, is a loving and caring God. Uh, he cared enough about them that he would uh, not send them directly into battle, but he also cares enough about them that he's going to spend time with them in the wilderness uh, so that they will grow in their maturity and their trust of him. Uh, that's why it takes them a long time to actually get where they're going. Mm. So God's doing this all out of love and compassion. And so in response to that, you know, we need to be faithful to him and we need to be willing to uh, follow his direction in our lives. Mm. Yeah, I, it would have been cool um, to have a map because if you actually look up like on a map, the route that they take, mm-hmm. it's quite I don't want to say humorous, but it kind of is like, it's like clearly they, the, the fastest way is that way. But if you look at the map, they're like, woo, all over the place. Yep. And, uh, uh, you kind of talked about, um, about why, and, um, it was quite eye opening. And you, you brought up a, a story that Tim Keller, you had actually, um, gotten from Tim Keller. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know about you, but as you were talking, like I couldn't help singing the Rolling Stones song. You can't, always get what you want, yeah. but you get what you need. Right. I, I had a feeling that might be uh, stuck in some people's heads. Oh, good, yeah, good. I'm glad. Right. That means cause you thought of it too. It's, There's a comedian who shared once about top songs, not to play during a wedding. Oh, wait, was, <laughs> he, he put that one pretty, pretty close to the top. He's like, no, don't play that one when the bride's coming down the aisle. Oh dear. Get what you need. Oh, geez. Uh, I yeah, love that. Not necessarily a great song, but, uh, oh, we could grab a trail with that so easily. I'm not going to know. All right, good. All right. Good. We're bringing it back. Uh, Tim Keller, you gave a story regarding a church member of Tim Keller's church, um, uh, because, and, and I want to talk about it because I think it would really resonate with a lot of people that maybe didn't hear it. Um, so maybe what I'll do, like, I'm going to throw it at you. Will you give like just, just a quick overview of the story? And then Mm -hmm. I've got a question for you to, to just to update everybody with the story. And then I've got a question to follow it. Sure. Yeah. So Tim Keller shared about how one Sunday after a church service, uh, there's a a lady in his church who came up to him and said, you know, basically if if everything you have shared this morning and in here at church about Mm -hmm. who Christ is, Mm -hmm. um, his sacrifice uh, on the cross, uh, the fact that he truly is God, if if all of these things are true, Mm -hmm. uh, then there's nothing that he can't uh, require of us. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was really like this moment where the penny was dropping in her mind of like, if all of this is true, like there, there is implications for our lives. There is, um, something that we need to respond to, uh, with the, the message of the gospel and Mm -hmm. who Christ is. But the piece of that story is that she didn't like that. She, that wasn't comfortable for her. She didn't. Yeah. I feel like there's probably a lot of, maybe a lot of listeners, um, that are like on the same page. Mm -hmm. And, and the one thing that you didn't mention, um, was like how Tim Keller responded to that. So for the listener that's in that place, how would you have responded or pastored that church member next? Or what, what do you have to say to the listener that's feeling the same way as this church member? Yeah. And and I think just to pull it back a little bit more, just like, why, why didn't she like this idea? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's uncomfortable about that? And and I think the, the thing that makes it uncomfortable is 
the fact that we like to be in control mm-hmm. of our own lives. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like to be able to decide um, where I'm going to live, um, how I'm going to spend my money, mm-hmm. um, what kind of relationships I'm going to build. Mm-hmm. Like, like I want to be entirely in control over my life. Cause and, we have kind of self-confidence in that, right? We can yeah. be confident in that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it, like what if someone sends you down a path you don't want to go, right? Like that, that makes it uncomfortable. Yeah. Like we, especially right now in this moment of history, we really resonate with the idea that that we're the captain of, of our own right. souls. Like mm-hmm. we can make our own decisions. Right. And, and if anything's going to interfere, it should uh, affirm what our desires are. Yeah. And if anything um, is going on, we don't like, we can change that. Like yeah. it's in our power to. So, so I mean, the big idea is like, like if the government's going to get involved yeah. or, or like if your, if your family members are going to get involved, like whatever it is, it has to be affirming of right. what your desires are. It okay. should actually, um, get you where you want to go yeah. and it shouldn't offer any Alternate. um, alternatives yeah. or even advice mm-hmm. on the way there that could potentially make life more challenging for mm-hmm. you. Like, so that is kind of the, the air we breathe right now. Mm-hmm. Um, And so I think that is why that question or that statement of God can require anything of me Mm -hmm. is actually a terrifying question. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying because, well, well, so who is this God? Mm -hmm. Who is this Jesus who can now require anything of us? Mm -hmm. And it's terrifying if we're following a God who isn't a good and loving God. Mm -hmm. Um, and and that's why we need the story of scripture to see, um, the character and nature of, of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. That's the only place where we can actually find comfort and why we always need to go back to it of even when he isn't affirming the desires in our hearts, Mm -hmm. that's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's actually so good for us that God doesn't always just give us uh, what we want, what we desire, mm-hmm. because so often what we want, what we desire is actually harmful to ourselves and harmful to the people around us. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we need Christ, why we need um, the Holy Spirit to be working in our lives, making us more into his image. But again, that's that's a hard, challenging process, um, but we have to have faith. We have to trust that God's actually doing all of this ultimately for our good at the end of the day, like it, it's, it's to benefit us. So would you have directed that, that church member or maybe the listener to, to learning the, the character, character of God and so that they can follow in, um, have confidence in Christ rather than just their own self-confidence. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like what, I mean, I guess you did answer the question. What would you, how would you pastor that person? And you kind of, um, already touched on it, but I, yeah, I guess I was, I was curious about what Tim Keller said. And then I was like, well, I wonder what Daryl will say. Yeah. I I don't, (laughs) I don't quite remember what Tim Keller said in response to it. Oh, okay. So he, Um, but when you read about it or or heard it, he did give his response. Tim Tim Keller has a great way of sometimes setting up stories and not necessarily giving here's the perfect solution (laughs) because a lot of it is like, sure, you know, situational, Uh, it's going to change for different people. Um, but yeah, it, the, the way to pastor through that, to think through, okay, so what do you do when, when this is a challenge? Absolutely. The first Mm -hmm. response is we need to study the word of God Mm -hmm. and and see what is the nature and character Mm -hmm. of Christ. Uh, And the next step of that is to actually do all of this in community. Mm -hmm. If the question is, you know, well, then God can ask anything of me. Mm-hmm. You have to ask a few follow-up questions like, well, can we be sure that w- that our decisions in life actually result in the life that you ultimately want? Mm-hmm. Uh, so often we'll see that people make decisions that actually can be harmful to themselves. It doesn't actually provide the life that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But when you get in community and you see others who are striving to follow Christ, then you can begin to see uh, the real benefits that, that come through that. That's why I think it's so important um, for as a church that we hear stories of how God is working in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, You hear incredible stories of 
Like when you hear a story of someone whose, whose marriage was falling apart, um, but uh, through great biblical counseling, um, they were able to actually bring their, their marriage back and actually have a, a thriving marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's an incredible story. And that's where you see like, oh, submitting yourself to Christ actually resulted um, in, in your life getting better. It, mm-hmm. it resulted in uh, a far better story than uh, not following that, mm-hmm. than, you know, giving up on that relationship, um, you know, those types of things. I, I think that's why it's so incredibly important to be uh, living in community, to actually know, like truly know other Christians who are desiring to follow Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've already talked about Christ's faithfulness. Um, there was a bit of a, a one liner that you said in your message, you said Christ was faithful first, um, first, first before what, like, let's unpack that. He was faithful Mm. first before what? Yeah. I'm gonna (laughs) let that linger. (laughs) Uh, what I had in mind there, like a passage, like Romans five verse eight, Oh, where it says that, you know, while we were still sinners, that Christ would lay down his life for us. Um, we didn't earn it. Yeah. That kind of the, exactly. Yeah. Like while we were completely rebellious against God, Mm -hmm. um, he came to, to rescue us. Like there was nothing about us that God said, you know, that person's amazing. I, I see they have a bright future in front of them. So I have to do this. Uh, it was entirely out of love mm-hmm. that we were actually uh, his enemies at the very beginning. Like because of our sin rebellion, we, we <laughs> in our deepest heart's desire, we would want nothing to do with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet he's the one who was reaching out to us to come and rescue us. And mm-hmm. so we see that in Christ, even see it like in Exodus like, why is God rescuing the nation of Israel? Like, like there, uh, no point does it ever give an explanation of, well, he had to rescue them because, you know, like someone was going to invent a, a cure for some, you know, disease. Or like, it wasn't like looking at something in the future of like, oh, they're going to do great things. But no, and all it is, is he said that he chose them, that he made this promise to them and, and he is being faithful uh, to that promise. Mm-hmm. And, and that's remains true for us today that, uh, the only reason, <laughs> uh, the good news is that Christ actually just said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to save those who would follow after me. Mm-hmm. And really it has nothing to do with anything that we're able to bring to the table, uh, nothing that we are actually able to do, mm. uh, which can be a little hard, like, like we want to think of ourselves as being, you know, like really good people. Like, yeah. like obviously like there must be something about me that yeah. God Lovable. Uh, finds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to have that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's actually a better story where God just looks at you and says, you know, just entirely out of love. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to choose you. Mm-hmm. I- I'm just going to pursue you. Um, like, I think that actually is a better story mm-hmm. in the end because then like if we, change our mind or if we end up not being able to, you know, if we thought it was because of some kind of talent, mm-hmm. but we get injured and now like, like, Oh no, God's going to give up on me. Um, it means that there's nothing that we can do to make me retain God's love for us. Yeah, that'd be uh, devastating. Like that would be the worst type of relationship. Yeah. And so we're entirely based upon God's free grace and mercy in our lives. Mm-hmm. That's what we're uh, clinging on to. And really that should actually fill us with more hope at the end of the day. Mm. So you kind of talked about <clears throat> in your message, you talked about the response to that and how we respond to that. And you respond, you said we respond by being faithful to him. And I realize that the, that this question might seem obvious, but I think it's a really good reminder to, to focus, um, on what, what that response looks like, but what, what might it look like to, f- to respond in faithfulness to him? Mm. I think that that's going to be a little bit different d- depending on the person. Right. And I, I think a great passage to look at would be something like Hebrews chapter 11, uh, where it talks about people who were uh, faithful to God's call in their lives. Mm-hmm. And you read all different stories of, you read about 
uh, Cain and Abel, you read about Moses, you read about all these different, and we often talk about them as heroes of the faith, but Mm -hmm. really they're just people who uh, were being faithful to God, that they had this, this hope, this trust that they had placed upon them in their lives. And, and if you read this passage, you'll see that like all of their stories are, are complicated and and hard. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I don't know if there's really any of them that were, it's just like, you know, this person, you know, Abraham had faith and his life was like just super easy. Yeah that's not like that often. I think that's what we, what we think is going to happen if we place our, our faith and trust in Christ is, is just life gets easier. And, and sometimes, um, this, this is what drives me a little bit nuts. And it's my biggest criticism of, um, Christian, um, Lingo. Christian movies that come oh, out. Okay. Yeah. So if you've ever seen these, um, I don't even know if it's around anymore. There's like, um, there's like a show, um, I like got an app like pure flicks. Yep. I don't know if that's even around anymore. Yep. You used to see all these commercials for it. It's um, around, yeah. but like these, these Christian movies and some of them are, are, are decent, but a lot of them are really cheesy and, and I've watched a lot of them. And that's coming uh, from Daryl who likes Hallmark <laughs> movies. So uh, I, I like them ironically. Ah, I thought it was part of your eclectic. Taste. No, no. I like Hallmark just to make fun of them. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, Okay. <laughs> but the Christian movies, because, because often they're written this way yeah. where someone has a huge problem in their life yep. and, um, and I'll just like, this is the synopsis of any stereotypical Christian movie. Okay. Someone has a huge problem in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, then they find some wise person mm-hmm. who's a Christian and they just look at them. They just say, all you need is faith. And then the person like, oh, faith. Oh, I missed that. I should have had faith this whole time. And and I think it's so hard to write these movies because it has to be like very like theologically non-denominational. Like it (laughs) can't be like, you can't like actually quote scripture in these movies for some reason, because you might quote from like the wrong translation. They're they're walking like this really like thin line, which ultimately results in a story that, that has some problems. (laughs) Some holes in it. But like, and then they're like, oh, then my life is just good from then on. Yeah, easy. You know, then then the marriage gets fixed yeah, and, yeah. And, and life is great. Mm. Um, and I think that's not the story we see in scripture. And I think that's why these movies end up being not as compelling as they should be. Mm. Um, because we know in our lives that, you know, okay, if I follow Christ, like, like that doesn't just instantaneously solve mm-hmm. all of the relational problems that I'm facing right now in my life. Mm-hmm. And it's actually why like the good Christian movies are the ones that actually are, are, are willing to take that risk to show how complex things mm. can really be. Um, these movies shouldn't end with a nice bow at mm-hmm. the very end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and although that's, happily ever after. although that's not very fun. We live in a Avengers Marvel <laughs> type of movie experience. We, we want that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you read Hebrews chapter 11, you, yeah. you see all these challenges. Um, but they say, but by faith, like they are able to endure all of this mm-hmm. because they're following Christ and they and, have confidence in Christ and they know that this will actually end up resulting in a better story right. at the very end of their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's why we should get like huge encouragement as we're reading this, even though they face difficult moments. Mm-hmm. Um, that ultimately end up being a better story in the mm-hmm. end. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you ever didn't make it as a pastor, Daryl, you should have been an actor because that, <laughs> that like oh, Eureka moment, it was like, I was watching a movie. Oh yeah. If yeah, you're you listening go. and not watching, <laughs> hop onto YouTube and take a look. Uh, uh, if you, <laughs> and if you want to write in a comment, tell me about mm-hmm. your favorite, uh, cheesy mm-hmm. Christian movie mm-hmm. and tell me why I'm wrong. Derek that, has a okay. few. He's brought a few up to me. Okay. Before, so that's good. ask Derek. Um, <laughs> speaking of Marvel, and don't worry, we're not about to rabbit trail. This is uh, oh, okay, relevant. Good. Speaking of Marvel and like crazy twists and stuff, they had a pillar of fire and a cloud of smoke. Like we are getting into the action part. I mean, the plagues were pretty action part too, but we are continuing it with a pillar of fire and a cloud of smoke. These were visual representations of Christ. I don't know about the listeners or you, or Billy, I myself do not have any pillars of fire or clouds of smoke in my life. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say like, today we, you mentioned we have the Holy Spirit. 
Um, we don't necessarily have visual representations of rep- representations of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. How can we know or discern that it's the Holy Spirit that we're listening to? You kind of talked a bit about it in your message about how we have the Holy Spirit and we can follow and listen to the Holy Spirit. But I think that that can get fuzzy and cloudy for people. Mm-hmm. How do we discern the voice of, of God as the Holy Spirit? Yeah. This is probably like a whole nother episode, I realize. This could be (laughs) so much. We could dig really into it. But I think that this is a a common question. Like, like how can we, how can we know for sure? Am I just listening to my own thoughts at Mm -hmm. the end of the day? Um, So I think that when we say like we desire to follow the Holy Spirit's prompting in our lives, Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there's. Uh, a few guardrails that we need to have mm-hmm. uh, that helps us really discern what the Holy Spirit is saying. Mm-hmm. Um, so first of all, like we need to understand that we have the word of God, mm-hmm. like through scripture, this is actually God's chosen means to communicate most clearly to us. Mm-hmm. So that way anyone can pick it up and we can read the same Bible, see uh, the same words, if it's the same translation, mm-hmm. I, like we can read this together and discern together. So I, I think first and foremost, this is how God wants to speak to us. Mm-hmm. Like often we think the Holy Spirit speaks to us uh, apart from the word of God. Like these right. are two separate things. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, it's it's actually the Holy Spirit is speaking through mm-hmm. the written word. Is that why it's called the living word? It might be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you had like a strong like yes or no. It's uh, possible. I get it. <laughs> but yeah, it's connected. Um, it's one and right. Absolutely, and I I think this is why um, if you're a follower of Christ, if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you, um, your interpretation of Scripture, like you're going to be able to see uh, more in Scripture than someone who uh, is not a follower of Christ. Mm. Um, like. Sure, they they can read the same words that they can um, discern a lot from it, but there is something missing if you don't have the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. dwelling inside of you mm-hmm. when you're reading the Word. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the first one. You know, if you're wanting to listen to the Spirit, first of all, like we should be saturated in His Word. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when we spend time praying and asking the Spirit to guide and direct us. Uh, we should be taking whatever feeling, whatever thought we get from that and bring that to the word of God, uh, bring it to other um, mature followers of Christ and just say, hey, I think the Holy Spirit is prompting me in this direction. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts? Would you pray with me? Help me to discern through this. And I think a lot of this is actually growing in our maturity over time. Uh, the the hope and the desire is that the longer that you are a follower of Christ, the more you're going to be able to hear and discern the Holy Spirit's movement in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, Like if you've been a follower of Christ for 10, 20, you know, more years, like as you're growing and maturing, Mm -hmm. it should, that process should become easier. Mm -hmm. But if you're a new Christian and you're like, oh man, I wish I could hear the spirit more clearly. Uh, the reality is like, you might just not be like mature enough and and, and that's okay. Like everyone starts somewhere, mm-hmm. right? Um, I was listening to a, a pastor last night. I was, I was out for a walk and listening to a sermon and, uh, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like he was talking about how uh, his name's Eric Mason. He's a pastor in Philadelphia. And, and he was t- talking about how like, like some of you haven't been through enough hardship yet to have this level of maturity to really hear the Holy Spirit in your life. Mm. And I'm like, wow, like that, <laughs> I liked how you put yeah. that of like, it's going through hardship. It is continually going back to the Holy Spirit of guide and direct me in my life. Mm. And, and the more we do that, uh, the more spiritually mature we can become mm-hmm. and the more easier it is to actually discern what the spirit's saying in our mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say, talk to another mature Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and eventually as you mature, um, time has this funny thing. Eventually you're going to be that older person in the room yeah. helping someone else who's younger in the faith, helping them to discern mm-hmm 
what it means to listen to the spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and really that should be our hope that as we're growing, maturing, that we can actually really truly minister to and help other Christians around us. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we get a little bit more focused on our own situation. Like I just got to take care of myself. Like God might be maturing you right now so that you can help that next generation. Mm. And that should be something like, like we're, we're hungry for We desire, like I want to help that in person who is 10, 15 years younger than me, um, figure out what it means to be a follower of Christ. Mm. Like every person should have this desire to be able to do that type of ministry. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's what God's really calling, not just like pastors, like calling like the church body, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do this. He mm -hmm. wants to work through every single follower of Christ. I think, um, I mean, I know we could have a whole separate episode uh, maybe even a series of on the Holy spirit. Um, I, I, I brought you should up, bring that up with Derek. I will. I have yeah. a couple actually. I'll bring that up to Derek. Um, he'll probably X them all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I brought up before that my mom, uh, mom once told me um, overheads and overhead. If you think that the Holy Spirit is telling you something, pretend it's an overhead and lay it over top of your scripture. And if it matches, then you can have confidence in what you've heard. Mm. If it doesn't, you got questions to ask, right? I also read a book. Um, yes, that's right. I read a book once and it was called <laughs> Jesus Continued, Why the Holy Spirit in Us is Better than Jesus Beside Us. And it was by J.D. Greer. Nice. And he's one of my faves. Solid. And he gave a similar analogy um, to Mount Rushmore. And he's like, what you don't realize is that there are hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of dollars that go into the lighting of Mount Rushmore. So it, mm. like at night, okay. if there was not that lighting, you would not see it at all. But he's like, the lights are like, there's an, it's crazy what's involved in lighting up Mount Rushmore. Mm. And he kind of said, the Holy spirit is like the lights. I'm totally probably watching this, but read the book. The lights are like the Holy spirit and they're going to point and make clear to Jesus mm. always. And if it's not, once again, you have to ask some questions. Um, anyway, that's I think, like a I think that's really helpful. Cause I think often when we talk about the Holy spirit, we're thinking of what can he do for me? Mm. Um, it's always going to point back to, I, I think that's, a, that's a great marker yeah. of like, is, is it pointing to yourself or is it pointing you more towards Christ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's heading you in towards Christ, mm -hmm. uh, then yeah, you can have way greater confidence. Mm -hmm. Like the Holy spirit isn't going to tell you to like deny Christ mm -hmm. and, and his church and, mm -hmm. and the Holy spirit's not going to prompt you to like really like bash the church online sure. and like be really angry at other Christians. N no, the Holy spirit's like, probably going to guide you to love the body of Christ more. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe a fair criticism sometimes, but like, but to do all this to, to love, you know, the, the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's a big question. Like, mm -hmm. okay, is the spirit guiding you towards that mm -hmm. or is it sending you in the other direction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found that extremely helpful. And as you can tell, I remembered it because it was anyways, it's not mine. JD Good Greer's. illustration. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, tell JD cause it wasn't mine. I will tell him um. <laughs> next time we hang out. <laughs> Oh man, if you hang out with JD, I want to hang out with him. Um, okay. I have one last question and, uh, um, you can take, yeah, you can, yeah, let's just dive into this last question. Cause I want to give you a chance to talk to the listeners. So what, what can you say to the listener who's unhappy or frustrated that God is leading their lives in a different direction than they may have wanted or planned? Maybe you could talk to the listener who's maybe in the waiting as well in wandering mm. in the wilderness right now. Yeah. I think first of all, just to, like, just to affirm, like, like if you are, if you are waiting, mm -hmm. if you are feeling like God's directing you towards something that, that isn't making you feel more fulfilled, mm -hmm. like you have this, this want desire in your life. Um, and I shared a story on Sunday about someone who, um, was, uh, same sex attracted mm -hmm. and, just like genuinely asked the question, like, is this okay in scripture? And just mm -hmm. could not find in scripture the yes to that desire. Mm -hmm. And, and she was saying like how difficult, how hard that was. Mm -hmm. And for years she wrestled through that. And, you know, by God's grace, she ended up uh, meeting a guy and falling in love. And they, uh, they have at least one kid now. And, and that was her story. But 
but she shared more of the story of like, she has another friend who's, um, uh, who's a, a Yale educated, um, person who is also same sex attracted, but still like studying the word of God seeing, okay, nope, this still can't be affirmed through scripture. And, and yet God didn't provide that other desire to marry someone else. Mm-hmm. And so she's just remained single for the rest of her life from there to saying, okay, so this is going to be how I'm going to live my life. And, and through that hard and difficult process, realizing, you know, that there is more to life than just, um, sexual relationships, mm-hmm. like realizing that you can have good thriving friendships with people around you that isn't intertwined with a, like a romantic, um, relationship at that level. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, I found that just a really helpful chapter in that book. I quoted, um, the, the secular creed, great book, really, Mm -hmm. I would commend that to anyone who wants (laughs) to dive deep into certain cultural issues. But really what that chapter was revealing is the fact that like sometimes when you're waiting, uh, and God isn't sending you in the direction that you want, that it can be challenging. And I think that's, that's okay to admit that and to actually bring that back to Christ mm-hmm. and just say, it, this is a hard moment right now. Um, this week I was reading um, Mark chapter four, where it talks about uh, the disciples and Jesus were on a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee and the storm comes up and like they're with Jesus. Like they've been traveling with Jesus. They've been living with Jesus all this time. They know who he is. They know his heart and his character. They know that he is, there's something about him. And even in the midst of that storm, they ask like, like, don't you care about us? Mm -hmm. Like that was their hearts. Like they had to ask him this question, like, don't you care about us? And you know, Jesus calms the storm and they realize like, wow, there's something special about who Christ is. They're beginning to see that he truly is the Messiah. Um, but I think that's a genuine question that we can bring to God of, of don't you care about us? And when we're going through hard, difficult moments, I think that's often uh, what that reveals in our hearts. It reveals something. And, and so we can bring that back to him and see how God is going to respond. Uh, Sometimes it will equal, he ends up calming the storm Mm -hmm. and and pointing you seeing, oh, okay, this is why my life started heading this different direction. Mm -hmm. Like realizing, oh, this is why you gave me a difficult marriage, or this is why you didn't um, like give me everything I wanted. Uh, Whenever I think about that, I always think of, um, uh, a conversation I had someone with in, in college, just kind of a joke here, but uh, he was talking about how like he really wanted to have, like, grow like a big beard. Like he really like wanted to back when like okay. beards were like super, were getting like super popular. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this guy, I like, he's like this big bushy beard. He's like, no, nah, if you were able to grow one, uh, you would just have pride. So that's why, <laughs> that's why God didn't give you the follicles to be able to grow something like that. Uh, and so and I'm clean shaven. You can see why, cause, cause I, that, I'm, you know, I, I'd be there too. I wish I could, uh, <laughs> but you know, but sometimes God doesn't allow us to have certain things because, right. Oh, like, well, maybe that, maybe that would have resulted in, in greater pride in your life. If you would have gotten that promotion, right? Like maybe that's the reason why God is sending you through deep waters right now is because mm-hmm. he's actually doing something in you and through you. Mm -hmm. And and so whatever I would like, what I would say to someone who's walking through that right now Mm -hmm. is, is to pour out your heart to Christ, Mm -hmm. uh, know that he is there and that he is listening. Mm -hmm. And just like the Israelites, like we need to have uh, patience Mm -hmm. as we follow Christ Mm -hmm. because you have no idea where this ultimately is going to lead. Mm -hmm. Uh, It might be a waiting season of a, a day or a week Or it might be years and and eventually maybe you'll see why did Christ actually make you wait so long for that thing that you were desiring. Mm -hmm. Um, But ultimately we can see that he's, he's doing all of this for our good. Mm. I love that. I think that that's a great place to just let, um, to just finish off on and just let it, sit for a bit in our, in our minds. Um, the secular creed by Rebecca McLowen. 
McLa- McLaughlin. McLaughlin. I think that's how you say okay. it. Okay. <clears throat> um, I think I said it wrong on Sunday. And you, you did said say McLaughlin. I'm yeah. just saying you did yeah, say. I it think <laughs> I think I was corrected afterwards. I think it was McLaughlin. Um, I, I, we we wanted to you we wanted to talk about the diversity there, the fact that you you quoted a, a female uh, author. But you said it, um, but we we did run out of time, and I apologize because I know we wanted to touch on that. Um, but. Uh, it, you said it was like a hundred page read. So it's a short read and you've recommended it here on the podcast too. So yes. check it out. Um, it's called the secular creed. Mm-hmm. It dives into five different, um, big cultural issues today. Mm-hmm. And I think she provided really good biblical insights. Mm-hmm. Um, and doesn't take, she doesn't take any, uh, cheap shots mm-hmm. and like genuinely wrestles through how as Christians we should, um, we should deal with these different things. So talk about things like um, uh, racism and the sexual revolution, things like that. Really helpful book. Yeah, I like that. And it's coming from a, a female perspective too. So um, yeah, something to, I know I'm, I was going to check it out. I actually already checked it out to see if I could get it on like Audible or something. Like that. Nice. <laughs> um, it's on my list. Uh, anyway, so yeah, if, uh, thank you so much. Was it as, was it as bad as you thought it would be, Daryl? No, no, one on one wasn't, okay. wasn't too bad today, okay. Blair. <laughs> uh, but we are going to be continuing uh, part two next week. God makes a way when there is no way. Exodus 14 to 15, 21. So yeah, we're going to get into uh, the crossing of the Red Sea. Ooh, okay. Yeah. The, the adventure continues. Yeah. And uh, Moses uh, breaks out in song afterwards, becomes a musical. Ooh. <laughs> well, I don't, know, re- I don't know what to do with that. Uh, <laughs> Um, we'll find out. We'll Exodus find out. chapter 15. You All see. Right. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to read ahead. I'm going right. to read ahead. So, yeah. Um, okay. So, I hope that uh, you found this conversation, ble- um, that you were blessed by this conversation. Don't forget that if you have questions coming up, maybe questions related to anything on the podcast, this is like the beyond, right? So, what you hear on Sunday, like we get to take the conversation beyond. Like, rabbit trails are encouraged. So, even if it's not related to Exodus, just send in your questions. We'd love them. Um, you can text, oh boy, okay, 226 212 7117, all right? Uh, text word ask or uh, send us a message forwardchurch.ca slash ask us and uh, we will ask, make sure. Ask questions about Blair and I'm an open book or I just feed hide. us, just send us embarrassing information about her. I have stuff to hide. Uh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, thanks for listening forward uh, and we'll catch up with you guys next week.